Hello friends, in this webcast we are going to talk about the concept of particle in engineering mechanics. What do we mean when we say kinetics of a particle or kinematics of a particle? Particle motion, but we solve motion problem on car, truck, rocket, satellite, pulley system. So why we call these bodies as particle. So in engineering mechanics, a particle represents a body and it has mass. It is a single point in space. The motion of the particle is as that of a point. The motion is also characterized by the motion of its mass center. And finally, we assume negligible size, shape, and dimension of the particle. And we also assume negligible rotation of the body. So let's see some example. What do we mean by this definition? Let's start with the particle represent a body. A car represented by a particle, think of if you are on a plane and you look down on a moving car. It looks like a particle. The car is of very small size compared to the distance in between the plane and the car. Thus, we can neglect the size of the car and assume as a particle. Similarly, we can also assume the boat as a particle and also the train with a cart as a particle. So for the engine, one particle and for the crate, another particle. Now let's discuss why we still consider the mass that particle has. We are not studying the mass of a car compared to the mass of the earth or something uh, enormous sized mass. The mass affects the motion of the body and we take the mass of the body as mass of the representative particle. The assumption of different bodies as particle simplifies the problem and make the problem solving easier. The assumption as particle has effect on the normal reaction forces. If we think of the normal reaction force of the car, we would think there would be normal force acting on each of the tire as shown as the green arrow. Well, uh, um, and those will be acting upward direction. This is not true when we assume the car as particle. As a particle, the car will have only a normal reaction at the mass center. Same as the car and as we assume it is a particle, the normal reaction will be only acting towards the mass center. Similarly, the train with a cart will have only one normal force for each particle, not at the wheel of the train or the cart. Now, let's talk about how a particle is a single point in space. The motion of the particle is as that of a, that point and the motion is characterized by the motion of its mass center. So, if it is a 3D problem and if we assume the plane as a particle, then it is just a point in space. If we assume 
a problem in 2D plane, then it will be a point on 2D plane or a point in linear direction motion. Thus, the motion of the particle is just as that of a, a, a point. The motion is also characterized by the motion of the mass center since the entire body the shape and size is neglected we assume that as a point and it is assumed as the motion of the mass center this assumption makes the problem solving very easy now let's talk about the negligible size shape and dimension if the car travels along this dotted path, which could be very long distance compared to the size of the car, which would be around 7, 14 or 15 feet. So if we want, like to measure the distance traveled by the car, if we consider the length of the car, which is very negligible size and does not affect significantly the distance traveled by the car which is so big of a number so that's why when we assume a car as a particle we just neglect the size shape and also the dimensions of that body a plane may be very big compared to us but when we study how far it is traveling from start point to the end point then the size of the plane is negligible and does not affect the answer. So that's why we can as again assume the plane as a particle. And finally, we can assume a body as particle when we can assume negligible rotation of the body about the center of mass. We assume a body as a particle only when we can neglect the rotation of that body. So what if we are to consider the rotation of the car? In that case, we cannot take the reaction force at towards the center of mass. Instead of that, we have to take the reaction force at both tire. And those are the condition we assume the body as a rigid body. That will be our next video. What is the concept of rigid body in engineering mechanics? So now let's take a quick test of our understanding today. So think of a problem where a player hits the ball, which ball is traveling in a curvilinear motion and at the same time it is rotating so the ball is experiencing a curvilinear motion and rotating at the same time our interest is to know the angular motion of a point on the ball can we consider the ball as a particle motion pause you can pause the video and think of a problem and make your answer if we look at the answer no, we cannot assume this problem as a particle because it has a rotation. And since if we consider rotation, we cannot assume the size of a particle, uh, size of the body as a particle. So we have to take it as a rigid body. Let's try another test. In this problem, if the rear wheel so the car has front and rear wheel if the rear wheels are always slipping and front wheel are free to rotate can we consider the car as a particle motion hmm take your time pause and think come up with your answer and move forward to see the answer no we cannot assume this car as a particle because now we're talking about each of the tires and the tires are not in same condition. One tire is slipping, another is not. So now we're 
focused into those tires and we cannot take the entire car as a particle so this is not a particle motion problem well finally we're down uh, to the third test the question asks if the end of the cord f as shown in the image is pulled with a speed of 7 meter per second determine the speed of block p can we consider the block as a particle motion hmm think for a while so the answer is yes in this case we can think the block p as a particle since we are not considering any rotation it is moving upward um, due to the pull downward velocity at point f we can assume this uh, body p as a particle so that was our um, lecture for today in next video we're gonna clarify the concept of rigid body in enduring mechanics we'll see you in next lecture till then thank you